You just bought an expensive piece of plastic known as a pro controller, and now you're feeling like a snap aiming stallion or an esports athlete in training. But now you've got this expensive controller with these fancy doodad but doohickeys on the back, either buttons or paddles, and you have no idea what to bind them to. Oh, you didn't opt for the optional reprogrammable rear buttons? Don't worry, we'll cover what to do in that situation as well. Now, turning off to my side because I noticed there's a couple of more of you hiding over here in the corner of my room. Get that right there on the sock hole. In this video, we're going to talk about what buttons you should rebind or remap to your rear paddles or buttons. Now, now, full disclosure, I got the idea from this video from the homeboy V Kudo, and yes, that collaboration between two great gamer minds of the controller genre is happening in the near future. We've just been kind of busy and whatnot, but still chatting some application that was programmed in somebody's basement called D Discord or Discord. Other than what to program or rebind your rear buttons or paddles to, we're going to cover what to do if you didn't get a remappable kit and they're static and not dynamic and you can't change them. And we're going to cover what to do if you do not have a pro controller, either you can't afford one or you simply don't want one for... God knows whatever reason. Maybe it, maybe it, maybe it hurts your fingertips or something. My fingers hurt. Oh well. Oh. Now your back's gonna hurt because you just pull landscaping duty. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywop in the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. So you got yourself a pro controller, which might be called a premium controller or a custom controller. They're used somewhat interchangeably, but they are different things. I'll cover that in another video. But one of the primary or key features is that it most likely has rear buttons or paddles so you can keep your fingers on the thumbsticks, keep moving and aiming, and not have to touch things like your D-pad and face buttons or action buttons. So I'm just going to get it right out of the way. In my opinion, 95% of the time you should rebind all of the face buttons or action buttons. If you only have two rear buttons or rear paddles, maybe you prefer it or maybe that it's just what you got, then I recommend having cross or A and B or circle, depending if you're on team blue or team green with your console preference. Or shit, maybe you're on PC. I just made a video about how being controller player on PC is uh, incredibly OP because you're getting the best of both worlds. In fact, I think that was the title of the video is the best of both worlds. So why do I say X and circle or A and B, which is going to be jump and crouch? Old Danny's driving by in his lifted truck. Gotta show the ladies how big his schmeckle is. Like, we live in the inner city. W what's the need for a full-size truck? Does Peepaw have a ranch downtown or something that I don't know about? When you get into a gunfight in close range or even medium range, you want to keep your torso and head hitbox constantly moving. That's why you see good FPS players, esports athletes, bobbing up and down in fights constantly as they strafe back and forth. It's because it's making it harder to hit their hitbox. Now, granted, you have to be constantly compensating for your aim as you move like that, but it is going to make you a much harder target. That is why I recommend you can be aiming back and forth with the animal sticks and strafing while spamming the crouch button, which I recommend you change all of your games eventually to hold to crouch rather than toggle. It will make you a lot quicker. And then also jumping, throw an occasional jump in there. I would say crouch is the most important one to have. You can actually substitute crouch for something like square on a PlayStation or X on an Xbox controller, which is going to be reload and also usually interact with the environment like in Warzone, bust open doors. Now, other than the face buttons, which like I said, 95% of the time is what you're going to bind the rear buttons to. There are certain games such as Apex Legends where the D-pad has some very critical actions, such as pulling out a med kit if you need to heal up, or even switching to grenades, because there is no dedicated grenade button in Apex Legends. You have to equip it and then throw it. So that might make sense to bind that to one of the rear buttons. Same thing with Days Gone, that zombie survival game. Heal is one of the D-pad buttons, and I remember playing that game with a non-premium or pro controller, just on a standard controller, and I would have to basically use this part of my thumb here, the ball, if you will, to maneuver my character while pressing the D-pad to heal up as I'm running away from a horde of zombies. That would have been convenient to just tap a rear button. So let's say you bought a premium or custom controller, but you didn't opt for a remappable chip where you can rebind these on the fly. Well, most modern games have key binds inside of the options menu, so you can just bind them that way to your rear paddles. But if they do not and you're on PC, you can download a remapping program such as DS4, which is going to work with PlayStation controllers or Rewazd, which you have to pay for that that one. It's between seven and $25, depending on the add-ons that you get. But that will allow you to rebind virtually not only any controller, but a baked potato, a pager, your mom's vibrator, controllers from the Civil War, basically, Th Theodore Roosevelt's joystick. You can remap pretty much anything. It's great. Now, I will say that there is a huge learning curve whenever you transition to a controller with rear paddles and buttons. However, once you get proficient in it and then get good with it, you will not want to go back to a standard controller. Don't get me wrong. There's some games like maybe a platform 
platformer like Crash Bandicoot, a racing game, stuff like that, fighting games, beat em ups, where I don't really need a pro controller. But anytime I'm playing a third person action adventure or a first person shooter, for sure, that's the main one, I'm always gonna have a premium custom or pro controller in my hands with either remappable buttons or paddles. I prefer four, I greatly, greatly do, because I use all four of them all the time. But some people prefer two, it's just more comfortable for them. There's actually some professional esports athletes that run two paddle controllers, a lot of them actually. Just personal preference, you're not less of a man or dried up old woman if you use two or four. It's what feels good in your fingertips, sweetheart. Now, a lot of controllers like this aim over here, you can actually remove two, three, all of the paddles if you want to. And if you prefer two paddles or you share the controller with somebody else, or you're playing a game that doesn't require paddles at all, you just remove them. Almost dropped it. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to practicality. The entire point of having rear buttons is to keep your fingers on the thumbsticks constantly. Whatever button on the front of the controller you are constantly pressing, rebind that to the rear buttons. But but Kevin, what about binding the bumpers, L1 and R1, and the left and the analog sticks, L3 and R3? Bumpers, I would say fuck no, because you can literally just slide your fingers up like that. You can even hold the controller like that. Granted, that's not very ergonomically comfortable, but I do understand the appeal of wanting to rebind L3 and R3. R3 is usually usually melee. However, you don't use it that frequently and your finger is already on the thumbstick, so it's not a big deal. I would keep that bound to clicking down the right stick. The left stick, if you're constantly pressing down on L3 to sprint and you're worried about that wearing down the thumbstick, that is a valid concern. Stick drift is prominent in any controller that doesn't use Hall Effect magnetic sensors, which like 1% of controllers I've tested use. However, almost all games have a setting where you can turn on auto sprint, which I recommend you do because unlike keyboard and mouse, where it's just a button, as soon as you press W, you're sprinting down the road. With an analog stick, if you just press it up 70% of the way, you're running, and then you press it all the way, and you're sprinting automatically, so you don't have to keep clicking down L3, and that frees up a rear button that you can bind to the face buttons. Also, there hasn't been enough studies or scientific laboratory testing to prove that clicking down L3 and R3 really does speed up the problem of stick drift. It would make sense that it does in my book, which is a very small book with pretty pictures, because I read it at a second grade level. Now, if you cannot afford a pro control, controller or you simply don't want one. The only reason I can think somebody wouldn't want one is that they're worried about the learning curve of accidentally hitting them and actuating them. But if they have a good resistance and they're in a good ergonomic placement, you don't have to worry about that. And again, practice and building up muscle memory, and then you are never going to want to play without them. But if you can't afford one, what I recommend you do is play claw grip. Now, it is freakishly uncomfortable when you first start, and most likely you will get arthritis over time. My fingers hurt. Now with claw grip, I do actually recommend that you stretch your fingers for about three to five minutes before playing, and then about every two hours of gameplay, stretch your fingers out again, because it is a strenuous position for your hand to be in, but it is incredibly efficient, and there are pro players that don't even use a premium or custom controller with rear buttons, they just play claw grip. Uh, one of the ones that immediately just popped into my head is Overtime AU. He's a Facebook gaming streamer that plays primarily Warzone on a standard PS4 controller. Oh my God. You saved uh, my fucking ass there. Thank you, bro. Um, a lot of people do it. It's just not very comfortable. And in my opinion, it's more efficient and comfortable and better for your knuckles to play with a pro controller if you can afford it. Hopefully this answered all of your questions. If it did, drop a like on the video so it gets discovered by more gamers. This video gets promoted in the Google algorithm. Helps the information to get discovered by more gamers. So it helps them as well and helps me to feel like a big boy by getting my view minutes up. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live. Every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace